In this short video, we're going to use what we learned in the previous video to give an easy proof of a theorem called Cayley's Theorem, which is important mainly for historical reasons. Cayley's Theorem says that any group G is isomorphic to a subgroup of the symmetric group on G. And one of the reasons why it's important is because when people originally studied what we now call groups, they just defined them to be non-empty subsets of the collection of all bijective functions from some set to itself, which are closed under composition of maps and taking inverse functions. In other words, the original definition of a group was what we would now call a subgroup of a symmetric group on some set. The modern definition of a group that we've given in our videos was introduced by Arthur Cayley in the 1800s, and this theorem shows that the two definitions are actually the same. We'll prove this theorem in two steps. And for the first step, for each element little g of g, let's define a map tau g from g to g by the rule that tau g of h is equal to g times h for any h in g. I'd like to first establish that for any g, the map tau g is an element of the symmetric group on g. And remember that that's just saying that tau g is a bijective map from g to itself. So to show that tau g is an element of S sub g, I need to prove that the map tau g is both injective and surjective. First, let's establish injectivity. Suppose that h1 and h2 are two elements of the group G which get mapped to the same point by the map tau G. Well then, by the definition of tau G, that must mean that G times h1 is equal to G times h2. And by the cancellation law in the group G, that implies that h1 is equal to h2. That shows that for any G and G, the map tau G is an injective map. To show that it's also surjective, suppose that K is any element of the group G. Well then, what we need to show is that there's an element h in g with the property that tau g of h is equal to k. Comparing this with the definition of tau g, it's pretty clear that we should take h to be the element g inverse k of g. With this as our value of h, tau g of h turns out to be g times g inverse times k, which indeed is equal to k. Since every element of the codomain is also in the range of this map, the map tau g is surjective, and since it's injective and surjective, it's a bijection, which means that it's an element of Sg. That establishes our claim that for every g and g, the map tau g is an element of the symmetric group on the set g. Next, for the second part of the proof, let's define a map phi from the group g to the symmetric group on g by the rule that phi of any element little g is equal to the map tau sub g. Now what we're going to show is that this map phi is a homomorphism and also that it's injective. That's going to imply that G is isomorphic to its image, which will give us the statement of Cayley's theorem. First of all, to show that this map is a homomorphism, we want to show that for any two elements G1 and G2 in G, phi of G1 times G2 is equal to phi of G1 times phi of G2. Keep in mind that the image under phi of a point in G is actually an element of the symmetric group on G, which is itself a map from G to G. So in order to show that phi of g1 g2 is equal to phi of g1 times phi of g2, let's think about what phi of g1 g2 does to points of g. Well, by definition, phi of g1 g2 is just the map tau sub g1 g2. So phi of g1 g2 of h is tau sub g1 g2 of h. And by the definition of tau sub g1 g2, tau sub g1 g2 of h is just g1 g2 times h. Well, moving the parentheses over here, this can also be written as g1 times parentheses g2 of h. And since the quantity inside the parentheses here is tau sub g2 of h, this is also tau sub g1 of tau sub g2 of h, which is the same as tau sub g1 composed with tau sub g2 of h. Now, again, by the definition of the map phi, that's the same as phi of g1 composed with phi of g2 evaluated at h, and so, since the function on the left and the function on the right take the same values at every point h in their domains, they must be the same function. Notice also that composition of functions here is the binary operation in the codomain, so this completes the proof that this map phi is a homomorphism from g to the symmetric group on g. The next thing that I'd like to show is that this map phi is also injective. So in order to do that, let's suppose that g1 and g2 are two elements of the domain, which get mapped by phi to the same point in the codomain. Well, by the definition of phi, that means that the maps tau sub g1 and tau sub g2 are the same. And so, in particular, that means that these maps have to map the identity element to the same point in g. But now, using the definitions of tau sub g1 and tau sub g2, that means that g1 times the identity is equal to g2 times the identity, and that's the same as saying that g1 is equal to g2. 
Therefore, if two maps in the domain of phi get mapped to the same point in the codomain of phi, they actually had to be the same point to begin with, which means that the map phi is an injective map from G to the symmetric group on G. Now we're nearly finished with the proof. So first of all, because phi is a homomorphism from G to SG, we know from our basic properties about homomorphisms that the image of G must be a subgroup of SG. And now, in case you're concerned about the fact that this map phi may not be surjective, we can always play a little trick here, which is to restrict the codomain to be just the image of G. So if we define a map phi tilde from G to the image of G under phi by the rule that phi tilde of G is phi of G, the fact that phi is injective guarantees that phi tilde is also injective, and now since we've restricted the codomain to be the image of this map, the map phi tilde is also surjective, so it's a bijection. It's also a homomorphism because phi is a homomorphism, so that means that it's an isomorphism between G and the subgroup phi of G of the symmetric group on G. That's the end of our proof of Cayley's theorem, and it shows that the two historical definitions of what a group is really do turn out to be the same. Okay, well, that's the end of this video. In the next two videos, we're going to go back and talk about more properties of group homomorphisms.